folks, it is 11.27 on Monday, May 13th, um, and I'm at 300 Indiana Avenue West, the Henry J. Daly Building, um, which is MPD's uh, city headquarters uh, to get records concerning my unlawful detainment at the hands of my PD secretary. <laughs> Yo, not? Yes, sir. What floor? Uh, let's me three. Number three first. Hi, uh, so I am looking for a, I believe it's a PD-251, um, the number is... Uh, when I called and gave my information, that was the report number they gave. Okay, does this look familiar? Yeah, that's, that, that looks like the report. Um, Do you know the reporting person, Ms. Nicole? Right, so she was involved in the incident, but I'm surprised they did not put my name on it considering they unlawfully searched me and... Oh, they didn't even... They didn't even... They didn't even list the fact that they searched my pockets, removed my ID from my wallet, and then... So is that information they would be required to report if they detained me, searched my pockets, pulled out my wallet, pulled my ID out of my wallet, and then copied my information down? So question, the officers, did you speak to any other officers there? Yes, yeah, so these weren't, these weren't the officers that detained me. These were, these were the officers I spoke to before, but I was detained and searched by two other officers. Do you happen to know their name? Yes, I do. Uh, I, it's, I was about to say what, what you might want to do, um, call or go back over there and see if it's possible if you can get in contact with the officers that told. All right, well, told. so concerning because they were trying to. For what you're saying, it seems like they may have filed a false report against you. So not those officers that's on this report? These aren't the officers that asked me to leave, nor the officers who searched me. Nor were, are they the officers. Uh, actually, Officer Tong said I was within my rights to be there. So but this, then an, a lieutenant also said I was within my rights so to be great. there. So the, was this your first time being there? Uh, or being at been the, there before? That was my first time being there. That's, that's crazy. I never heard or seen anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually published a full video on it on my, uh, I'm, I, I operate a YouTube channel, that's how I, that's how I publish my journalism, and I published a full video on it, I believe they got quite a few calls, so. That's crazy, I would, I would never just, Yeah. So it's not the officers that say you. No. So that's, that's one thing, and they consider MPD as the victim, and then the case is open, so. Basically, they're claiming you to be the suspect. Uh, right, of unlawful yeah. entry at MPD. Unlawful which entry, I mean, spoke to a lawyer, and yeah. that they said you that's, can't really unlawfully that's, entry that's at their police, police station. You, you might need to take that's report. a false police report. Yeah, make sure you keep that video footage. That's a false police Oh, I've got the video footage. You gotta take the court. Okay, so, yeah. Get back in contact with your lawyer, because that's a false report. First of all, you have to be inside an awful in order for them to call it an entry. Entry, you walk through right. the place, you walk through the door. Right, I never entered the building. Is when they ask you to leave while you're inside. Right. And you're already outside. Well, I mean, I may have been on MPD property, if but I wasn't in, the, yeah. yeah. You That's, yeah. isn't that the most ridiculous thing? You got a copy of that report. Make sure you keep a copy of that report. One for yourself, one for your lawyer. You need to get back in contact. And there's no them. chance they filed any other report that day. Nothing else came up. Wow, ridiculous. That's the first time ever in my 12 years of being I've seen something like that. That's great. All right, what's That's your name, my friend? Taylor, T A Y L O R. I really appreciate that. That's this no this That's is. No
you definitely got a good taste on your hands. <laughs> you got your for you. Thank you so much, Taylor. You have a great rest you of your day. Take care. All right. So over here at the records division, I was just told that this is pretty much clearly a false report. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to do some follow-up on this. I wanted to take a moment to do a complete analysis of this report. Uh, George Taylor at the public documents section pointed out quite a few of the issues, but I wanted to demonstrate those issues and others to you. Um, here the report is in full, and next I'll do a deep dive section by section. Uh, there are many issues of sloppiness in the writing of this report, and I'll mention those briefly, but I really want to focus on the substance, as that's what demonstrates that this report was filed with an intent to deceive about what happened that day, uh, April 6th. To start, the event start time is listed as 17.05 or 5.05 p.m. This is inaccurate. Um, in the public narrative section, which I'll discuss in a minute, it lists a time which is much closer to being accurate, 15.42 or 3.42 p.m. Next up, the only responding officers listed are Nicole Allen, who wrote the report, and Michael Tong, who is listed as the assisting officer. These were the officers who initially approached me, but neither asked me to leave, nor were they the officers who detained and searched me. The offense listed is unlawful entry, which, as you heard, Mr. Taylor believes not to be applicable if I did not enter the building, which I did not. Uh, regardless, we'll talk more about the problem with unlawful entry in a moment. Um, they list the case as open, which indicates they're still investigating. I'm not sure exactly what merits further investigation at this point. They list the location as the front of the building, which is accurate. Even while I was detained by Captain Burnett, he told me I was welcome to be in the front of the building. The victim listed as MPD. Um, I'm sure they were feeling very victimized. Um, that's sarcasm. Now we get to the public narrative, which is the good stuff. Uh, first off, it says BWC or Buddy Warren camera activated. This could be true. Sergeant Johnson was the only one who I noticed with his body camera off and he refused to turn it on when I requested that he do so. As you can see, here it lists a more accurate time of 15.42 hours or 3.42 p.m., which I mentioned already. Next it says, while in full uniform, S1, that's me, and I wasn't wearing any uniform, that's kind of sloppy wording there, was observed standing on the steps on the side of 3320 Idaho Avenue Northwest, photographing and videotaping the building and police activity in the rear parking lot. The undersigned officer made contact with S1 and asked if he needed assistance. S1 refused to communicate. This is false. I only initially refused to communicate um, and asked, asked the leave the property. I assume this is supposed to mean I was asked to leave the property. Again, I did communicate before I was ever asked to leave. S1 was advised several times to leave the property. I was actually only asked initially once, then told several times, including by Officer Tong, that I was within my rights to be exactly where I was. Um, S1 eventually left the property on foot. Now this is the interesting part. Not listed are my detainment, temporary confiscation of my property, in the search of my pockets and wallet. Captain Burnett and Sergeant Tolliver, who executed those actions, are not mentioned on the report. Sergeant Johnson, who asked me to leave before also telling me I was allowed to be where I was, is not mentioned. None of the instances in which I was told I was permitted to be doing what I was are mentioned. Initially, I thought that there might be a second report that Captain Burnett and Sergeant Tolliver filed as Officer Allen and Officer Tong were present during the later portion of the incident, including my detention and search. However, Mr. Taylor was not able to find any other reports from that day concerning the incident. I then noticed that the report stated that I left the property on foot, 
which neither Officer Allen nor Officer Tong was present for. This leads me to conclude that they received the information from the other officers not listed on the report, and this is supposed to be a report concerning the entire incident. Um, this was a false police report filed deliberately with the intent to deceive, just as Mr. Taylor suggested. As I'm sure you know, filing a false police report is a criminal action, and the incident is currently being investigated by the Office of Police Complaints.